This is a perfectly normal elevator ride. This elevator ride is incredibly uncomfortable. What if you could measure these awkward moments? What if you could transcribe them like a conversation? In the 1960s, an anthropologist did just that. Edward Twitchell Hall is known for conceptualizing the personal space bubble, and he also created a whole system of notation to record how people navigate shared space. Hall had been around the world and taught thousands of foreign service personnel how to communicate in different cultures. He believed culture and communication were inseparable, and that communication was as present in silence as in speech. He once wrote, man has developed his territoriality to an almost unbelievable extent, yet we treat space somewhat as we treat sex. It is there, but we don't talk about it. Hall called his study proxemics and it dissected personal interaction with eight key modes of analysis that each had their own code for recording. One, posture and sex. These drawings used simple lines to show if it was a man or a woman, and if they were standing, sitting, or lying down. Every symbol got a number, too, so each position could be clear in an instant. Two, how people interacted. Sociofugal relationships preserved an individual's privacy. Sociopatal ones encouraged interaction. Drawn as if from above, he could show if people were facing each other or not. Here's a couple side to side. Here's one back to back and they could measure the effects of space on interaction. Three and four, touch and space. He built a grid to describe every touch. Zero, zero was closest with a caress. Six, six meant no contact at all. And in between was the nuance of human interaction. 22 might be a hug, 33, a high five. Five, a visual code. Even eye contact could be quantified. From the center of one retina to the center of another, it could be dazzlingly direct, or it could be the peripheral vision that dodged real connection. Six, body heat. Body heat could be recorded too as another way of measuring connection. Hall quoted one subject who said she could feel her dance partner's stomach heat up. Seven, smell. He even monitored smell and breath, giving it its own code. DBO means a smell as differentiated body odor. A wafting smell could be as loud as a word. This is the section about smell, isn't it? Eight, loudness. Now, if somebody said, Jeremy, I got you the documents. It could be coded on a scale to measure the nuance. Jeremy, I got you the documents. Now observers could describe interactions like a meeting without needing to use words. Instead, they could show a man sitting in a group, touching no one with indirect eye contact, no heat or smell, and a soft voice. And together, all of these precise measurements help discover the personal space bubble we all know. Hall refined it in other papers and books, but his personal space bubble is the one we know well, as he defined it in his book, The Hidden Dimension. Surrounding a person, he found a one-foot bubble split in two for intimate space. A bubble of personal space followed out to four feet. Beyond that was the social space of four to ten feet and public space beyond that. It became how we think of space, just because one person bothered to observe it. Today, we still use proxemics to understand space and people. It's guided us not as a rule book, but as a theory. For everyone from theater directors to intercultural communicators to video game designers. He's nice, bit of a close talker. A what? So how long are you folks in town? Oh. It won't make the elevator ride more comfortable. But now at least you know how to describe it. So Hull had a lot of different inspirations for proxemics, but I wanted to talk about one that was kind of unexpected, an ornithologist. He was inspired by H.E. Howard, who wrote about territory in bird life. 